Truthy Tuesdays, yeah, yeah. Truthy Tuesdays, yeah, we bet you too. What it is, a oh, what's up? And I ain't even gonna go there because that was the past life. That was pre Christ. That was a whole nother side. You ain't need to see I me. Mean, what's good to you too? Yeah, we in a new set in new environment, probably like 25 feet to the left. To the left, to the left, everything you own in the... Some of y'all need to put your wifey tab, your husband tab, take it and put it to the left. But don't put this video to the left. And don't try to click past it. Don't try to go previous or before or after. Because we got a word for you today. Truthy Tuesdays is back. Back and we're better. Yeah, Elijah shoots us behind the camera. My man Prophet Dame is here. Elijah is over there. He's get. He's. I think he's on the mound. Actually, he may be rebuking rain. He's over here. Wifey is. She's over there. Hello. We can say hello to her in the spirit. But today's a powerful word, as you know, and it goes directly hand in hand with last week. Last week was how do I find joy in my relationship with Christ. It's so powerful, it's so pertinent because so many times we can grow weary in doing well and we don't always enjoy our lives. But it's our God-given right to enjoy our lives. So we talked about that. God gave a powerful word. He went in, he spoke to your boy, through your boy, and as your boy. And lives were changed. And this week, come on, we're back, we're better. It's the same thing going hand in hand. And before I speak, you know I got this. KJB version, not message. So you can get the message, stop here stressing, so he can massage your ego. You know I have notes as well. And we're out here for it. Today, this is a powerful topic, and it's on love. Yeah, I said it's on love. And it's something that's so powerful because love is the key to your walk with Christ. All oh, this whole Bible, this whole Word of God, it's plentiful, 66 books. It's a love letter of God to His people. God is absolutely love. And I believe so many times we can get bogged down by loving people and trying to love ourselves, trying to love God, and trying to act like we have it all together. So this message is, is powerful and it's, it's crafted for you, it's crafted for me, it's crafted for all of us. And the title of it is, How Do We Love When It's Hard? How to Love When It's Hard. Because it's so powerful and if we look at the whole scripture and everything that Jesus is reiterating all of love. Love, 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 love. He reiterates it. It's exceedingly hard at times. Right now, our world is in a huge detriment, almost ex mere extinction of love. That's why we're having police brutality. That's why we're having everybody coming out, having something to say with a microphone. Everybody has a platform now. We can talk about that a whole nother time. But it's because there's no love. And we don't feel the love. We don't see the love. And we definitely don't get to touch the love. But in order to walk with God and to have a joyous life, you need to use love as the key to get in. We have to have love. And Jesus reiterates it from the jump. I love in Matthew 22. You guys don't have to turn there unless you want to. But Matthew chapter 22, the Pharisees pull up on Jesus. They're trying him again. They want to bait him into a question. And someone says, what is the greatest commandment? Well, which is the one that stands out the most? Obviously, there's the Ten Commandments. But then Moses has so many other Levitical laws. There's actually commandments that aren't part of the 10 that aren't really glamorized. But the Pharisees, the teachers of the law and the scribes ask him, what's the greatest commandment of God? And Jesus replies and he says, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He says that, that this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second commandment, he says, second to this, so after you love your God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, boom, all your soul, thing that you can't really see, the soul food, the soul in you, the music, and all your mind up here, now we have to love your neighbor as you love yourself, reiterating. And I love it because that he says after that, on these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. So everything that Moses was doing for five books of the Bible, we got Deuteronomy, Numbers, Leviticus, Exodus, he's just going in the whole time. None of it matters without love. That all the law hangs on it. Everything that every prophet has ever done now is here for love. So I think it's important to now know how do we love when it's hard? How do you love your brother, your neighbor? What if your neighbor's hard to love? Because that's the second greatest commandment. After you love God, sometimes we have the, the good part here. Here, me and God, loving God all day. What if, what if your neighbor hard to love? What if you that neighbor who's hard for your brother to love? What if it's hard for you to love yourself? What if God's having a hard time loving you all the time? 
Because sometimes God gets frustrated. The love is still extrapolated past that. But how do we love? Life is all about loving past relationships. It's the love that sent Jesus to the cross. John 2, 16, everyone knows that God so loved the world. It was love that allowed him to come down in a man form. That he sent his one and only begotten son. Only one begotten son, Jesus. So that we can come. Now we can have everlasting life through him. But it's the love. That is the key to our world. It's the key to our walk. And walking in love, when it's hard, is so frustrating at times. It's so grievous. It's something that is hard to do. Everybody has a relationship where they can think of right now somebody who is hard to love. And I think it's important that we can push past love and get the real definition of love. Because without that, we will never have any success in our relationship with Christ. We will never further progress the kingdom of God. We'll never do anything. We have to love. Absolutely love. And the first point is simply this. We have to identify love. Identify what it is. And actually see the firm foundation of it. We have to put some definitive structure in it. It's important because now in our society, the TV screen, movies, really everywhere you look, social media, don't get me started on that, is there's this misconstrued version of love. And people actually think that they're exhibiting love and they're spreading it to other people. But in actuality, they aren't because God is love. This is all love right here. And when we don't have the true definition of love, all of our labor and all of our efforts are in vain. Again, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We want to love, but sometimes... It's, we just get bogged down by people. Sometimes we get bogged down by ourselves and by what we're seeing. So then we have this whole, basically, dissension of women who are hopeless romantics and waiting for love all day. And you got dudes who is like, yo, you don't even deserve to be treated like a queen. And we got this back and forth that's going on when everybody wants love in some facet or manner. And we're all designed with love in us. So innately in your inner being, there's love there. So of course you want it to come out, but we identify love so we can tap into it. That's the first point. We have to identify what it is. And honestly, I don't even know if love is a, I, I don't even know if it really exists at first sight, like everyone says in the movies. You don't just go and smash a girl and that's love. For the longest time, I thought that having sex with somebody was, was true love. And it's just an expression of the love in you. It's not love in itself. God is love. He's a spiritual being. And I think when we can get back to the real root of what love is, now we can grow these plants and trees of love. We actually need to get back to what God says love is. Because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't never seen nobody in my whole life and be like, oh, I'm in love with him at the first sight. But if you love your inner being and your spirit and your identity, then you can love someone who you don't know because you recognize them as the spirit of God. We have to be have an objective definition of what love is. Because way too many people been dropping the L-bomb lately. And your boy was one of those all the time. You know, I just say, you know, love you too, no big deal. Like, yo, because I felt like it was a feeling. I was dropping the L-bomb left and right until I really got... Married for the final time ever in the physical realm. And that's when I actually realized what love was. But before that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you there with a girl. They there with you. And it's like, yo, she's like, I'm getting these feelings inside of me. And you don't want to leave nobody hanging. So it's like, here's a trick that I always did. I don't know if y'all heard this either. If you say olive juice really fast, it sounds like olive, I love you. So it's like, olive juice, olive juice. I said it all the time. I, was, I said it to wife the other day, but I snitched on myself. That's different. See, love is selfless. But I used to say that all the time to feel some type of a conviction for my manipulation that was all off key. I'd be like, oh, God, you know, I said all of juice, but they didn't know that. So I think so many times we can just say love and not even know what we're saying because we get these feelings inside of us like, oh, my God, she's emotionally invested in me. I'm attracted. It's all good. I'm feeling some type of way. But that love is absolutely just not a feeling. In actuality, it's not that at all. And trust me, the more you walk with God and the more you see what love is, the more you will actually start to realize that what we've been painted on the screen and about is this apple of divination, perfect, perfected will, we ain't gonna get into that, is that love is much, much deeper. So we have to start by what is God's definition of love? 
Thank God we have the love chapter written in 1 Corinthians 13. Thank God it's actually written by someone who gives us the mar marital instructions and stipulations, who's actually a monk. Y'all yeah, have heard of the Apostle Paul. Saul of Tarsus coming back to fruition on the road to Damascus. And he writes about what love definitively is. And I think it's important that if you're having a hard time experiencing or establishing love in a relationship, that you need to know, hey, is, are you actually really being loving? And my first point is now we got to get to the identity of what love is. And here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Some background, some preface, because love... It's the key to life. It's what God did. It's what covers a multitude of sins. It's absolutely the whole point of being here is to love God and to love his people. But if we don't really know what that love is, we could be missing out on a blessing and actually holding people's blessing back by not giving them love. So first, Corinthians chapter 13, and I'll turn that over. Yeah, we are here right now. Love. It's a warm and thing. Da, 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 da. Do y'all know that Johnny Cash song? Yeah, I know. Y'all don't know, man. I'm a, see, I'm an older soul. I know I'm young, but I'm, I gotta... Let me stop. I ain't even gonna go there with y'all. Love. Charity. KJV version. Similar. Synonymous. They're the same. It's like Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Different manifestations. Love. First Corinthians 13 says, Though I speak with songs and tongues and, and of men and angels, have not love. Love, I become as sounding brass or a tinking symbol. So we see that Paul's talking about if I can have all the gifts of prophecy, of just anything, spiritual discernment, wisdom, understanding, but if I don't have love, I'm literally a clanging brass. I just sound like this every time I talk. And I believe sometimes when we try to over talk or over explain things to people and try to control, we're actually not exhibiting love at all. And he says, even though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I'm nothing. So still, nothing without love. And he goes in, you know, I could feed the poor all day. I can have all these great acts that I'm doing physically, just like the Pharisees, but there's no love in my heart. And that's how I was a trickster and a manipulator in college. I was nice as heck. I was doing the acts of love, you know what I'm saying? I was smooth, I like to talk my talk, get late night, you know what I'm saying, be beta, boot up on the phone. But I wasn't feeling nothing in here. I wasn't feeling it at all. And I think we have to learn to actually play the game of love. Cause you know, man, you learn to play the game, learn to play the field, right? But we gotta learn to love, we gotta learn to play the game of love. And why it was so bad for me is because I knew how to do all the physical actions, but I never really was in tune with love in my heart. I didn't really, I knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? What's understood don't, don't gotta be explained. That's how I was rocking, just like that. But what I was doing and I, was detrimental to my soul and everybody else. So even if you think you're operating in love and you're not operating by the basis of love, by God and his definitive word, is you're gonna be yourself, you're gonna be in a hellhole. And by the time you get out, you're gonna be like, how did I get here? I've been there. I literally have been there. I'm debating telling y'all this story right now, but long story short, I was involved with a woman. Yes, it was a woman. She's my ex. I'm not even gonna name her name. I pray she ain't watching this. I don't think she is. Anyways, long story short, we had a tumultuous relationship. Love was involved. So I thought at the time being the L word was involved. And long story short, we just, it just got to a point where our backs were against the wall, but we were growing so far apart while we still had a soul tie that eventually the, the rubber was meeting the road. The rubber met the road and it basically ended up getting me physically kind of assaulted in some the physical detrimental situation, which was needed to be combated by the spirit. And I'm just saying that if I would have nipped it in the bud instead of trying to perpetuate this love cycle, then I would have never, I would have never actually had to do that. I would have never actually had to get scratched and kicked and almost beat up and my life almost taken from me and praise God he held it down. That story will become an elongated version next time because we got too much to cover here. But I'm just saying that when we operate in things that felt good to me, it felt good to her, it felt good to me. But as the man, your job is to really discern and move and lead the relationship how you have to lead. So this video is essentially important for men. Men need to operate and lead in love. Because women are already there. They ready to get married. Most of them. 
they read, they have no problem with the commitment issue. But it's the man who is like not always operating from that vantage point. We operate up here. Women love to operate down here. And you need that balance. So I'm just saying that to say you need to operate in what God says love is. And what does he say right here? 1 Corinthians 13. He says that love suffereth long. It suffers long. Long suffering is one of the gifts of the Spirit. The first thing that Paul says about love is long suffering. So if you're having an issue and you're thinking in your relationship, are you long suffering? We need to get this definitive identity to structure right now. Love is long suffering. It's long suffering, man. I get it every time. It's kind. Love is kind. It's gentleness. I have to be kind in a relationship right now. So now start to pin back and think, are you kind? Are you kind in your relationships? Are you kind to anybody? Are you kind to yourself? Love is kind. God is a God who is kind. He has a kindred spirit. I have to be kind to wife. You can't, you can't not be kind to someone and expect them to listen to you. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. So it doesn't get jealous. So oftentimes in life, we can get jealous when someone gets a position higher than us, lower than us. I remember in college, I was just talking to her about this. After my junior year, I played very well. I averaged like 17 plus points, and I didn't get put on one of the all-conference teams, which was derangement, by the way. It was crazy. I was like third in the league in, con in scoring. And I remember I, I was like a little envious of just people who I just knew shouldn't have gotten the award, despite me getting, despite me having way better numbers than them. And I'm so glad that God had me walk through that because what he was having me push through is the fact that you don't get to be envious and still love. It's a selfless act. You should encourage and stir each other to good works. But I remember that I cried. And you know how sometimes with love in this, you could be in a relationship and it's like, yo, it's all good. I'm really happy for you. But behind closed doors, you know you can't wait to get out of that room to sell out. That's not love. And God doesn't want us to think that that's the identity of love. It doesn't envy. It doesn't envy at all. Love doesn't, it's not parading itself. It's not puffed up. It's not always trying to get your way. It's not you always being right. You know how many times I'm wrong a day? I'm wrong infinitely. I don't even know what I'm eating dinner. I don't even know what I'm eating for dinner. Why? Because I don't get to parade myself. I don't get to choose all the time. I don't get to envy. She makes certain decisions, but love lays down the sword. It's big. It's important. It doesn't behave itself unseemingly. It doesn't seek my own way. Me wanting to have those accolades for the Atlantic Sun Conference was me wanting to have my own way. Was it justified physically? Yes. But the spiritual message was just saying that can you walk in love even when you don't get what you want? I had to. It was, it was an awful time. But it need to. It's not easily provoked. So now if you think about love, do you provoke people a lot? I, I have an issue sometimes where I like to provoke. I like to stir people up. That's not really love. Do you let people provoke you? Do you always have an attitude issue? Are you always mad? Are you always tight? Are you that person who every single time someone comes in the room, they start, hey, how you doing? And then they... Roll their eyes on the side. Are you always provoked? Are you easily provoked? Because what that's doing is that's actually not operating in love. And you're not receiving love or able to give it. Why? Because your emotions are high. Are you trying to control something? What is making you so provoked? It's important to understand what is love. Write these things down. Love is patient. It's kind. So if I'm going to be loving, I have to be patient. So now think about the relationship. Think about the situation that is boggling you that's bothering you the most are you being patient are you being kind are you being truthful are, or are you easily provoked are you envious are you jealous are you angry at someone are you in strife these are not things that are in love they're not at all but what are you rude verse 5 says love does not behave rudely and here's the thing about being rude too you cannot say anything and be rude so many times we love to play the victim like, I ain't even rude to her. I don't even say nothing. Well, are you rude? Do you speak to her when you see her? That's rude. I think one of the most rude things that you can do in life is I see you as a human being. You see me and I don't acknowledge your presence. I always, I'm big on that. If you see someone, you can acknowledge their presence. But don't try to say, well, I ain't even doing that. I'm not rude. Is your behavior rude? Is your aura that you're giving off, is it rude? People can pick up on vibes. But don't be rude and get mad at God. Like, Dang, it's just so hard to love him. So hard to love him. Well, what do you expect? That you rejoice in iniquity. I see a lot of times that in the African American community, we promote violence. We see these different fights that happen. I seen one at the park the other day, actually. 
and I forget the kid's name. He squared up on the other dude, and you could tell like it was it was kind of it sent it stemmed from a one on one battle. You know what I'm saying? Which I think is so so bad, but you want to cast it up. Basketball is a team game, but basically you know you come down, clear out, clear out. I got a hey hey dribble dribble, try to score, dribble dribble, foul, whatever whatever. At that point, it becomes a five on five basketball game, but it's really one on one. So it's ten people, it's eight people watching too. So long story short, this one on one basketball game was going on, and it got kind of hectic. And I, I was just, we were just passing them the ball, letting these two people work out. Funny enough, it ain't even the best people. I don't know why I was giving them the ball. Whole another side point tangent. And long story short, they end up squaring up. And you know how you get in these situations where you see that people don't really want to fight, but because the masses were out, by the way, the multitude people gassing the brother. You know, you always got that one token dude who about to fight, like, yo, I would have never let him do me like that, bro. He's on my team. So I'm like, bro, shut up. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, bro, he's just talking to Chad. Like, he could just fight, but I'm betting he probably couldn't. So long story short, the masses are got, are got like, yo, you don't let that try you, bro. Yo, I would never let that happen, yo. Or my mama. Everybody has someone dead that they're claiming to the grave, too. Like, oh, my dad, dad, this, that. I'm like, what is going on right now? I just came here to play basketball. So we had these two people. And honestly, neither of them really want to fight. Like, most of the time, people don't really want to fight. They're not even hoopers for real, but everybody gassing them up. So they end up squaring up a, a couple times, but ain't nothing really shaking down. You know, just to pull up your pants thing, pull up your pants and do the rock away. Lean back. Lean back. That's all they were doing. They were just pulling up their pants, throwing up the set. And I'm like, what is going on? I didn't really think they was going to fight for real until this one dude said, yo, stick him. So he was like, he turned to him. You know how, whenever there's a confrontation, I hate this in arguments too. Me and Dame having a conversation, and we keep turning to the side to say something like, yo, get this right here, bro. Like, they really trying to, like, bro, talk to the person right in front of you. You big and bad. So long story short, this dude talking, he's like, yo, what you want me to do? What you want me to do, bro? He turned. He was like, you know, stick that in. So he turned and stuck it. He actually stuck him on. Whoa, what is going on? So then they start fighting, and I'm like, yo, y'all need to chill again. Like, I got to always be the fight breaker up, or uh, supposedly. And I'm saying all that to say that that is not love at all. Because it doesn't provoke you to do that, but it doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in truth. And God is truth. This is truthful. And so many times we rejoice. We record fights. That's not love. We record people making fools of themselves. That's not love. That's not love at all. But love believes the best, hopes the best, endures all things, believes all things. Like, that is what we're supposed to do. And whenever we think that we're supporting someone to make a stance for themselves, that's not really love. And we can see this right in the scripture. It's not. It doesn't behave rudely. It's not self-seeking. It's not envious. None of these things. It doesn't parade itself. It's not egotistical. It's not prideful. Love is none of these things. So now I want you to sit and start writing some of these things down. Like, wait, have I been patient? Have I been kind? Okay, well, am I kind of envious? Do I want my own way? Why am I having dissension loving somebody? What is really, really going on here? Because we need some identification right here. We need to identify what love is so we can abide by it, right? Of course, if anything, if you play any game, no matter what you do, you got to know the rules of it. You got to know, well, how can I walk in this? Just as we talked about what is sin two weeks ago, now we need to know what the right action is. We don't just want to know, oh, this is the wrong action all day. But what can we, how do we walk in love? What is God's real definition of love? It's right here. It is. Be ready to suffer long. Be ready to be kind. Be ready to not puff up on everybody. Always popping off. You always mad. No, that's not love at all. Don't be provoked. And here's another one that says, thinks no evil. So now I'm not thinking evil or applying that energy over that situation. It's important, but we need to identify what love is. Because unless you identify it, you'll always be walking in mistruths. You'll always be walking in something that is partially a lie. Partially a lie. And all Satan does, the devil does, is he just takes the truth perverts it a little, a little bit, takes a little bit out, adds a little bit to it, and it's no longer truth. And what we've done with love is, is we've done that. We've made it seem like anybody could just go sleep with a girl for a, a night and that's love. When a real man takes a woman and loves her for a whole life, applies it over a long period of time, that's what God does. So the first point is simply identify what love is and identify it with the Word of God. We have to identify with the Word of God. Second point is simply this, and this is where everything starts to get nitty gritty. I know it seemed like a study session, but it's important. It's important to know that because it says in the Bible, my, period, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And the knowledge of God's way of doing it. God is love. And there's no love that exists outside of him. The scriptures say that we love because he loved us first. So unless we follow his template, 
but can never actually walk in love. It's so funny to think about that because God, he's, a, he's absolutely, he's the example setter and we can't do anything apart from him. So follow the template of what he's telling you and check yourself if you're not. Check yourself if you're not walking in this lovely way. We're not. Check yourself. Second point is simply this. Apply love to yourself. You have to apply love to yourself. You have to. It's essential and it's key. So now you get the, you got the definitive structure. Well, here's some things that I have to now work on, right? And, and honestly, look at your situation from a, a solid standpoint. Look at it from an unbiased. Are you praying for that person? Or are you just mad all day? Or do you believe the best? For the relationship, do you rejoice in truth? Do what are you really doing? Or do you just want truth that only says your way? That's only your way. Yeah, I've got to tell her about herself. Truth hits both, hits both sides of the lever. It hits both people every single time. So yeah, you may have a time when you tell someone about, your, about, about themselves, but best believe it's coming full circle. When you get told about yourself, then when you're on the floor and now someone got to take care of you, it's selfless. But love is balanced because it covers a multitude of sins. You got to apply it to yourself, though. Because you can't give love if you don't have any. How can I give you water if none's in here? This is what we're trying to do in life right now. Thank you, God, for this example. We got this much love in us, and we're trying to dump it on everybody else. We want love all day. When in fact, you don't want to deal with yourself. You don't even want to love yourself. So now you love yourself this much, and now you're in a relationship with somebody, and you're dumping this much on them. And the other person may have this much amount of love to give. But we're going to be unequally yoked. We're going to be unbalanced. That doesn't make any sense. Fill yourself up with love so now you can dish some out. I can't give you ten. I can't give you $5 if I don't have $5. I can't give you an assist on the court what? If I don't have the basketball. I can't give you what I don't have. So I can't love you in any relationship if I don't have any. I think it's important to really realize that. I can't give you anything that I don't have. For example, this house. I can't rent you a room if I don't have ownership of the house. I have a room. My dudes gave me a one feet room. That's all we got. We got one room. But take ownership of what's yours by the definitive word of God and then apply it to yourself. Now watch this. Are you patient with yourself? Are you patient with yourself? Are you always down on yourself? Always condemning yourself? Always, always mad? I, I believe for me, when I was playing basketball, when I was in the career of a basketball player, I was never nice to myself. I was never kind. I was never patient. I always wanted myself to have the statistical categories, the, the stats from the, from the different game. And when I didn't meet those, I was in a valley. And when I met those, I was like, ah, it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing what I need to do. Celebrate yourself. Love yourself. How do you love yourself? But this point is apply love to yourself. How? By loving God. You got to love God because God is love. And that's the first thing, first deity, first being that you'll ever love is God. Are you patient? Are you long suffering for God? Are you patient with God? Do you, do you wait on the Lord? Or do you just want to answer every, every, every five seconds? Do you wait on the Lord? Or do you wait too much? Are you out of balance? Do you long suffer for God? Or do you just want God to give you everything right now? Do you long suffer for the gospel? It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Long suffering is what Christ did. Will you suffer? Come, suffer with us is what the scripture says. It talks about that in Acts. Come on, we just suffer for the gospel. We have to suffer though. And in life, suffering is a part of one of the curses that he gave on Adam. But do you suffer for anything? Which means what? Do you go through any trials, any type of tribulations? Do you care? What? Do you parade yourself to God? Do you listen? Do you get checked? Do you follow the truth of the living word? Are you kind? Are you arrogant? Are you arrogant? Do you let God humble you? Do you have any love that you receive from God? Because I think it's important that you know right now how unclean you are, how sinful you are, how many transgressions you have, how much iniquity you have in you. But what? Do you still love yourself? Do you look yourself in the mirror and love you? Because if you don't love yourself, you ain't never going to love anybody else. Before I got to a relationship, I had to love myself. I had to love who I was in here. Not love what I look like physically. Not love everything I did. I don't love everything I did. But what? I love the person I'm becoming. Are you even on the track to becoming a good person? Do you care about that? Do you love who you are in here? Because everything out here is going to change. 
But God wants to change you. He's not going to change your circumstance with that person who you're having a hard time loving. Maybe you're having a hard time loving you. God's not going to change your circumstance. He wants your circumstance to change you. That's what God wants. He wants you to change. He wants the spirit of God within you to, to rise up as you're relinquishing your flesh. He wants you to change. And once you start realizing that, once I started realizing that, things got a whole lot easier for me. There's many times in, car, in life where we're dealt hands, the cards we're dealt are not ideal. And I'm so glad that God uses it for his glory. Because in that, we can see that love is not selfish. As I was talking about basketball, as I was talking about different relationships, if I would have got what I wanted, oh my gosh, you know how, and how bad of a situation that I would have been in. And I think, and in fact, I know some of the reason why we struggle loving people is because we just try to get what we want. We just try to control the other person. And that's not love. God doesn't even try to control you. He gives you free will. So I believe it would be smart for us to apply the love to ourself. Are you truthful with yourself? Because you can't be truthful with nobody else if you're not truthful to yourself. Only reason that I can say half of the things that I can say in a marriage to her is because I'm truthful with me. So don't try to be Mr. Truth to everybody else and you ain't truthful to yourself. And don't try to condemn everybody else if you're not allowing God to convict you. Just convict, don't condemn. But I think it's so important because we have to apply the word to ourselves. There's nothing that I can do for you if I haven't experienced it. If I have no type of word in me. I, that's what life's about. It's about sharing in our low lights and applying the love of God to yourself. I, I will honestly say for the first time in my life, I really felt love for myself in like March. For the first time in my whole life. I really felt like my life was purposeful. And the only reason I felt that love was because of God and because of what God cherished and what he brought around me, right? It was, it was um, right before the wedding and I cried, man. I really, really cried. And I know for a lot of us, it's so hard to love yourself. It's so hard to really, and the process is never ending. So don't think I'm just saying like, you're going to love yourself tomorrow. It's not going to be like that. And in fact, it's going to take a long time of you walking through not loving yourself to actually start to see some fruits of you loving you. So I think it's important to do that. It's important to have some affirmations. It's important to apply love to yourself. Go back, apply the word of God to you. What does God say about you? What does the love of God say about you? Does God, God says that you are to die for. So apply love to yourself. And then your situation will change. Because you'll actually be the change. And that's how we move on. I had to apply love to myself. When everybody else leaves you, when I was hurt in college, when I was injured, when I was down alone, isolated, was contemplating suicide, was depressed, was really scared, had a lot of friends who had passed away in the city. I was in Jacksonville and I was thinking every day that it was my time to go. I was scared for my life out of that. The only way I got out of it was by following God and applying the love. I really felt as if I was going to die. I felt like death, death was creeping up on the doorsteps, knocking, just waiting for me. I'm a 6'6 guy jittery at every stoplight. I'm looking around, I'm like, yo, I didn't even want to, every red light that I hit, I was having anxiety. And that only way that you can move past anything in life is applying the love of God to you. And you only get that by following God. Because God is love. You'll get no love from anywhere else. And what we do is when we try to get love from somewhere else, we give a knockoff version. Instead of giving water, it's really salt water. It's really a knockoff version. It's something else. It's alkaline. It's Kool-Aid. It don't even taste the same, but we don't even care about the taste or look the same. So we need to make sure that we're giving love. Last point is simply this, and we're rolling. Identify what love is. Apply love to yourself. Put it in action. Apply means to put into action. Create it down. You've been experiencing love. It's all good to read the word all day. Know the word. Know it. But put it in action. Faith without works is dead. Love yourself by following God. Put it in action. Apply the word to yourself and apply it by following God. And third is simply this. Extend God's love to others. Do not just be a Pharisee all day talking about yourself, being prideful, fasting, letting everybody know what you're doing, and don't extend the love to others. That's the worst thing you can do. For me, it hit in college. It hit really hard in college. My senior year, I made dedicated and devoted time to following God's word. And I had I played the fence, so I was out and about way more before my, my sophomore and junior year. So now I came to this situation and time of my life where I'm like, yo, I'm really about to take this serious. I'm about to take my walk with God serious. So what I did is I just climbed on the mountain 
I was up on the mountain most. I was not giving nobody any time of day. And I was getting frustrated all the time with people. Y'all ever just been agitated when you've seen somebody? I was getting agitated OD all the time. I was getting bothered. I was having trouble with relationships. Really in the earth. And I remember God told me one day, he was like, bro, you're literally like taking the word. You've kind of became a Pharisee and you're not working on relationships at all. And you know me, you can have some type of justification. Like, I don't need no friends. I don't need nobody. I'm good by myself. Just me and God. But God, when only Adam was on the earth, said it wasn't good for man to be alone, uh, alone in Genesis 2.18. So he had to justify it. He had to readjust what he was doing. And I remember him. He told me he was like, you don't love me if you don't love my people. You don't love me if you don't love my creation because I'm in my creation. And when he told me that, I was just like, yo, like, God, yeah, relax. I'm, I'm doing all of this Bible time with you. I'm reading. I'm writing for you. I'm trying to hold it down. He was like, you don't, he told me, he was like, you don't love me. And love is completed in the earth in God's people because that is the ultimate form of love. That God completed love perfectly when he loved someone who was imperfect because love covers a multitude of sins. We have to extend God's love to others because that is the real challenge. The scripture says in Luke 6, towards the end, Luke 6, 32 through 35, it says you can't only love people who love you. Even Pharisees do that. You have to love your enemies and then your reward will be good. So if you only love people who love you, there's no reward in that. Oh, yeah, I'm only tied with him. He's tied with me. But can you actually show love past? Because that's what love is talking about here. Can you be patient to someone who's impatient? Can you be kind to someone who's a jerk? Can you be truthful to someone who never wants to hear anything but lies? And you're just going to stroke everyone's ego. Can you be nice to someone who only wants to provoke you? Can you be these things? Is there a balance? Love is the water to the fire of hate. And we have to understand that God is love. And his love is made complete in others. 1 John 4.16 says, We know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in God, and whoever lives in love, lives in God. And God in them. So if I'm living in love and I'm living in God, I love God and I love God's creation, his people. First four, first John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. So yes, love is actually from God. And the only reason we actually can love is because we've seen love from him. First John 4, 20 says, first John 4, 20 says, whoever claims to love God, this one's big, yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. So if I'm claiming to love God and I hate someone, I'm actually a liar. What? For whoever does not love their brother or sister, whom they see, cannot love God. Whom they cannot see. Nobody's ever seen God. They can't love God who they've never seen. So now I was thinking like, I was telling God all day like, yo, I love you God, I love you God. But I was having some type of dissension with brothers and sisters. And the scripture says clearly, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. And you hate, by, hate someone by just not applying love there. It's huge. Whoever does not love their brother or sister, whom they have seen, can't love God. So now, I can't love God if I don't love his people. I love his creation. That's what he hit me with. I'm like, wait, so love is a duality. It's both sides. In order to love people, I got to love God. In order to love God too, I got to love his people. Because I've never seen God. 1 John 4, 21 says, and 1 John 4 is just a powerful passage, and he has given us the command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So you can't just do one. You got to do two. You got to do another. You can't just be on the cross vertical. You have to bump elbows in the earth. And because God's love is made complete in sinners. It's made complete. Yes. People are hard to love. So are you. I am hard to love. Extremely hard. I can, I can let wife get the camera and she can talk about it for two hours. Things that are hard to love about me. But she doesn't. Because she loves. She covers. It covers a multitude of sins. She doesn't expose. Don't go exposing your brother and sister. Cover them. And I promise you, in following that template, you will be able to love. Follow the identity of love in the word. Apply it to yourself. Apply hard work to yourself. To love you. I can't tell someone how to work hard if I don't work hard. It's a joke. I have to live what I, I have to live what I'm talking about. I gotta be about it. I can't just preach about it. And what? You must extend that love of God to others. Don't just be you and God all day. And I promise you, if you truly diligently seek love and seek God, your relationships will get better. I didn't have a great relationship with my pops for a long time. And honestly, thinking about it, it was all me. 
He wasn't doing anything. But when God changed me, guess what happened? Wow. And guess what you have to do in order to change? You have to give up control. I just was upset because he wasn't doing things my way. My way. Yet here he is, given to me my whole life. Put me on the earth. I never did anything for him. And now, I had to actually change. Funny enough, I remember this. And I don't know if you guys can relate at all. But sometimes you get like this little tension with your parents. And you go talk to one parent. And then that parent's actually on the, other, on the side of the other parent. And you're like, dang, you're not even my friend either. Like, what's going on? So really, the parents are on the same page. And you're like, well, I'm going to talk to dad about it. And dad's like, yo, go talk to your mom. Yo, don't talk to your mom. Don't talk about your mom like that. You go to mom. And dad's like, yo. And then mom's like, yo, like, we ain't going for it. So my mom used to always take the side of my dad. This is like four to five years ago. Always take the side of my dad all the time. And I'm like, bro, I'm about to stop talking to her. She hit me with it hard one day when I was in college. And she was like, no matter what you say or do or anything, your dad is in your life. I decided that it would behoove you to have a father figure. Many people don't. If you want to take, mistake that blessing and just be stressing and complaining about it, go ahead. But the ball is in your court now to change it. It really was. And it really stuck with me. I was like, dang. Yo, you don't just check me like that. She said that. She was like, are you going to change it? Are you going to put the onus on? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm a son. I'm a son. I don't have anything to do with it. But God saved the world through his son. And I think so many times in, for, in order for us to take our power back, we just have to try. We have to try and realize that after you love yourself, sin and all, what? You can love someone else's sin and all. Don't ever think like, how could that person ever do that? Don't ever say, I would never do that. Because you might... Yo, it smells just as bad as the next person. You are hard to love too. You are that same person here. We don't have to talk about there's only one of us here. But I'm saying all this to say my relationship changed drastically with my dad. Guess what? When I stopped trying to control him and when he stopped trying to control me. It's so funny how it could really just be one-sided. Misunderstandings all the time. You go talk to them, they straight. They don't think nothing's wrong. It's no, it's all Gucci down on their side. So I think it's important. That to love past in order to deal, to love. How do you love when it's hard to love? Love yourself. Find out what love really is. Don't just take someone else's word for it. Don't even take mine. I'm coming to you straight from the scripture. Straight from the scripture. So obviously the voice of God's here, but go figure it out for yourself. But don't go to no guru. Don't go to just anyone. Don't go to the love doctor. Go to the one who made love. Go to God. And that's how we move past love. That's how we move and how we love when it's hard to love, because it's hard to love you. And when God saw that it was hard to love his people, he came down and was the change. He was the solution to the problem. Love solves issues. By forgiveness, whatever you have to do, get rid of it. Leave it at the door. And this is why. Life is too short. That same person that you're having a hard time with loving is probably just like you. Probably just like you. There's some type of class. You guys are probably similar, right? Fire don't just, just clap, fire clashes with fire, not with water. So there's something that's actually similar to you guys. You guys aren't just total opposites, total contrary, but life is too short. Because that person you're having a hard time loving, who's in your midst, because sometimes it's family. Let's keep it a stat. Sometimes it's like, God, how did you make them my family? That's just crazy. And sometimes God's like, it's hard for you to be in the family. It's hard for me to be your father. But he still has chooses to believe the best. So still choose to hope for the best. Because why? Verse 8 says this in 1 Corinthians 13. Love never fails. It never fails. It endures all things. So if you're in a relationship right now and it's failing, it ain't love. It can't be love. This is why this this is why Tiffany's the only girl I've ever loved. Why? Because it's not failing. And it won't fail. Because God's the solid foundation. So if something's going on in your relationship, solve it. Fail it. It's not going to fail. Don't just let it fail. Solve it by being one side. Well, I, I just think they have to do something else. Jesus made perfection on his end. He made his per perfect plan. He came down and it was all one sided. He decided to cover and to be, be the solution. So solve your issue. Why? Because you don't, you never know. You don't know how long you're going to be here. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. You don't know how long that person is going to be here. So go to the grave. Go and have a clear conscience and release everything you have to do. It's not going to be perfect. It won't happen overnight. But leave it all at the altar and be reconciled to your brother because it's hard to love. It's an action. You can't just love up here all day. You got to love in thought and in deed. So I think it's just important to realize, find the identity of love. Find the real root and apply it to yourself. Apply what God says about love past just 1 Corinthians 13. Love corrects 
it chastises, it disciplines, but balance it out. Don't just be telling everybody about somebody, about yourself. Lo apply love to yourself. Be real with you. Look yourself in the mirror and say, yo, I stink sometimes. Yo, I'm aggravating sometimes. Be real. And then extend the love that you've given, that God has given you to others. I think it's important. And I know that when we start loving in action, past just talking, past just saying the right things, past just thinking the right things, we will change the world. And it will be reconciled. And God will get glory. And that's the most important thing. God will be pleased with you. So leave whatever you got to put your pride to your side. If you got to apologize, apologize. God, Jesus decided to be wrong. Even when he was right, he decided to be sin. Be the wrong, the only perfect person ever, ever to walk the face of the planet, decided to take the penalty of an imperfect person so that you may, might be made perfect in God. So, Father God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the timeliness of it. I thank you for the truth that's behind the message. And I thank you really just for the solution to each and everything that we could do in life right now, Lord. We understand that it's hard to love, Lord. It's hard. It's hard to love each other. It's hard to really put trust in you at times, Lord. And it's hard for you to even love us, Lord. But you did. And you continue to. And you always will, Lord. So thank you for allowing us to have constant supply of your love. Thank you for allowing our actions to never take away from the love of God, Lord. That nothing can separate us from the love of God is what your word says and what your scripture is. So I just pray against anybody who's struggling and loving someone else or even loving themselves, Father, or maybe even loving you, Lord. I pray that they would follow this template and that they would come back to you, that they would look at the written identity of love, that we would look at the factors and parameters of what actually makes up love. What does it consist of love? And I know that we can only find that in your word, Lord. I pray that we would then apply love to ourselves, Lord. Sometimes it's so hard to love yourself. It's hard to speak affirmations. But I think it's important that we know how to love ourselves. We know how to receive God's love. So then we can ultimately extend it to others. And we can make the world a better place. And we can further perpetuate and progress your kingdom, Lord. So I pray that this message is... I actually know that it's powerful. I know that it's... It's been cultivated in minds and souls and hearts, Lord, and I pray that you would just get the glory and that we would go out and carry forth being love bearers and love disciples and followers, followers of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have, if you're struggling in love, scroll back to a few weeks ago and I dropped on here meditation videos, self-affirmations. If you need to do that every day, apply the self-love to yourself. From the word of God, love yourself and find out about love. Because a life without love is honestly not love. Love y'all. So Sushi Nan is the hottest market out right now. It's the best food in the county. I love y'all. God loves y'all. Live your life worthy of living by following the king. Follow Jesus. I love y'all. Two Tuesdays. We out. Peace.